What's up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision and uh, today we're going to be talking about the correct grip. And uh, we actually made a video, it was like one of the first videos we made on this a long time ago. Um, and it wasn't, it got pretty far down the list and it wasn't performing as well so we removed it but I get a lot of questions on this so we're, we're making another one. Um, so first I'm going to go over kind of the most common mistakes that I see and I see all sorts of stuff working here especially when we're tuning and how that can negatively affect your bow and then we'll get into how to set your grip properly and consistently so you get a torque free grip or the torque that is in it is consistent shot to shot which is really the goal of a grip. So the first and most common thing I see is people who just what I call you know the pistol grip. They just grab the bow, wrap their hand around it and they don't really put much thought into it. They just grab it, kind of a grip it and rip it mentality. And the problem with this is two things. The first being, when my knuckles are vertical like this, when I extend my arm, it actually rolls my arm into the string. So lots of people that think they need an arm guard because they're hitting their arm, it's not, it's not because your draw length is too long or your arm is too straight, it's because your grip position is inconsistent. I can still shoot a locked out arm with a correct posi uh, correctly positioned grip, and never hit my arm. Um, the second problem with that is that when I have pressure on all sides of the grip like this, it's extremely easy, even just squeezing my hand, you see how much it torques that bow. And then also it's really easy for my wrist to want to break right to left that way. So what happens is when I'm full draw and there's that pressure on that, that front grip, when I release that pressure translates into the grip, it translates unevenly and, I, and it induces torque into the riser. And it's a nightmare when you're trying to tune. Um, you get really inconsistent holes. You'll be right on one, left on another. Um, and then, you know, obviously an inconsistent grip and inconsistent arrow flight is gonna result in an inconsistent point of impact. So uh, what we wanna do is find a way to get that grip set correctly and consistently every time. So first I'm gonna kind of show you what that's going to look like. So when you look at your palm, you've kind of got the two halves of your palm there and that center line that runs down the middle. The outside of my hand or the pinky side of my palm, uh, that half should ideally should never cross onto the grip. So if you're looking at it from this side, you know, if you're at full draw and you can see this part of your palm and this part of your palm on the grip, that's going to induce torque. What we want to do is get that grip right, right on the inside of this thumb pad here because when my palm and my thumb are pointed towards the target, that's essentially a flat spot. It's, it's a soft muscle. If your hand is relaxed, that grip's just gonna melt right into the, the palm of your hand, basically. And it's gonna push that bow straight forward. So what I like to see are the knuckles at about, about a 45 degree angle um, and a broken wrist down. So I'm not, I'm not high wristing it like this. I've got pretty even pressure from that thumb knuckle down through the pad of my thumb. And then the key here is, well, really two things. The first one is that that, that wrist needs to actually be broken in and my thumb pointing towards the target and my palm facing the target. If I get too outside like this, if my knuckles roll towards the target, it's gonna wanna turn that bow when I shoot. Conversely, if I come too far inside here, it's gonna wanna turn the bow the other way when I shoot. So I like to see those knuckles at about a 45 degree angle. My thumb is pointed towards the target. These first two, maybe three fingers are coming in and just touching the very front of the riser. I'm not wrapping them around because as soon as I wrap, my knuckles roll vertical and towards the target, again, inducing torque. So thumb towards the target, couple fingers right on the front, and then that wrist breaks down just like that. Now, an easy way to do this if, if you're new to shooting, it might feel a little awkward at first. I see a lot of people, they, they end up hooking the bow. They're too far out on their thumb pad. They come out like here. And what happens then is again, the same thing. It's gonna, it's gonna hook, hook the grip and turn my bow right or left. Uh, for left-handed shooter, it's gonna turn it left. Right-handed shooter, it's gonna turn the bow right. So to set your grip really consistently, I like to make what I call a little pea shooter, right? So it's just a little pistol grip. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up with that, that pea shooter, so it's like a check mark, bring the, the throat of the grip right into the center of that check mark, just like that. And you can see that my, these fingers, the curled fingers, they're actually just contacting the riser or the grip on the outside there. Now, if I try and, if, I'm, if my knuckles aren't in the right position or my hand isn't in the right position, as I try 
to bring my hand into position, it's gonna smash these knuckles into the side of the grip and it's not gonna be comfortable. So you want them to just gently slide, like my middle finger here is just gonna gently slide up the grip, thumb is pointed towards the target, I'm gonna break that wrist down and then I can bring these other two fingers and just rest them lightly on the front of the grip. So if you set it like that every single time, you will always have your grip in an identical position. Um, it, I know it feels kind of weird at first, people feel like the bow is gonna fall out of their hands, um, but you'll feel, especially with most modern bows, they have a real thin, pretty narrow grip and they're designed to fit kind of right through that lifeline in your hand right there, right down the pad of the thumb and then come right down through the, the pad of your hand or the pad of your, your, uh, your palm there. Now, you want to get that grip set before you draw. So I see a lot of times, you know, when, when we're tuning bow with somebody, they draw the bow like this and then they get back and they try to reposition it. The problem with that is that there's not very much pressure on, you know, you're not holding a lot of draw weight there. And when the bow's at full draw, it's really easy to torque it. So if I draw and then try to position my hand, that pressure is gonna torque the bow differently each time. So you wanna come in, hook up your release, get your little pea shooter, get that grip set, then come in and draw your bow. So boom, we're right there. And I'm not, I'm not squeezing the grip. If you can see the, the pads of your fingers getting white when you're at full draw, or if, you know, if you have your buddy watch you, you don't wanna be squeezing the bow. I'm literally just, I always say the hand is a cradle, not a vice. I'm literally just pushing that bow away from me. So the hand is super relaxed. You should be able to wiggle your fingers and just let that, let your palm essentially just, you know, melt into that grip. Um, this takes a little bit of time. It's something you need to be conscious of, especially if you're a new shooter. You need to take the time every time and set that grip the same way. Um, and pretty soon, just like anything, we'll be committed to muscle memory and it'll be really easy for you to tell if you're not in the right spot. Something just won't feel right. Uh, so take the time, you know, again, make your little pea shooter, make your check mark like this little pistol, <laughs> you're gonna come up into the throat of that grip, break that wrist down, then I can bring these fingers around and it should look something just like that. So I'm not, my hand isn't open. I see that a lot, people have a wide open hand. Um, you know, my, my palm is just as tense when it's open as it is when it's clenched. So you literally just want a completely dead, relaxed hand. And when you do that, your fingers will kind of naturally just curl down and just lightly touch the front of the riser. So I wanted to do another video on this because I see, I see a lot of improper grips and you know, a lot of times guys that say, oh, I can shoot really well at 20 and it's okay at 30, but then 40, 50, and 60, it's opening up. And there's a lot of factors that can play into that. But if you have an inconsistent grip, it's always gonna be an, an issue trying to get tight groups at distance or really, at even at 20 for that matter. Um, now, I know there's a lot of guys out there that have, have shot a different, you know, different style than that for a long time, that's okay. But if you go to any of these big shoots, uh, if you watch guys like Levi Morgan, Jesse Broadwater, Braden Gallanthine, Rio Wild, Paige Pierce, I mean, Steve Anderson, the, the list goes on and on and on. All their grips are going to be very, very similar. The, the concept is going to be the same in terms of minimal contact, all the pressures on the back pushing straight forward, and uh, and it's it's a torque free grip. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Um, thank you guys for watching again. I really appreciate all the all the comments and feedback. And uh, as usual, remember precision is the decision. Keep them in the middle, and I'll see you on the range.